now this is kind of this is kind of what I wanted to get into. Uh, bait is my favorite for winter. You typically stay out of shakers more often. Um, and what do fish eat? They eat, they eat herring and anchovies and salmon, right? They don't eat metal very often. Um, and they sure don't eat grass either. So anchovies or herring, any any either one of those two are great. Everyone down here typically runs herring, and they're actually becoming it's more becoming more and more popular to run anchovies. I run anchovies personally because it's easier to get a better roll on them. They're not as flat, they're not as deep, and they're more torpedo-like, so you can get a really good roll on them pretty easy. Um, you can so sizing is bait, five inch, five and a quarter, five and a half, and six inch. For anchovies um, by Great Harbor Bait Company, it's not marked in the package. It's done by how many, you'll be able to tell by how many fish are in the package. So if there's 12 um, anchovies in the package, you're five to five and a quarter. If there's 10, you're up to the five, five and, or five and a half, five and a quarter range. And then when you start getting like eight in a pack, you're six inch plus. And that's all dependent on where, what you're, when you're cutting your fish open, on what you're gonna run. Um, Brian, I just run plain kosher salt, except for an area 10, green bait, works pretty well. Uh, last weekend we actually didn't have a whole lot of luck on bait, we did pretty good on hardware. Um, but I do dye my bait green when I fish down here. Um, some people use liquid brines and they doctor it up and put anise in it and whatever. Alex likes to make his smell like black licorice. I think it's nasty. You've got the only thing, I have a video, uh, the only thing I run is uh, a couple bananas in the package, which I threw at Alex one day on the boat. Um, cut plugs. Uh, anybody, who's a cut plugger in here? One, two of you? Seriously? Three, four? Amazing. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, that's an art. I suck at it, and I do not run cut plugs. I hate it. Um, and I want to learn, and I want to be good at it, but I'm not, and I just gave up. That's not worth it for me. Uh, so I run teaser heads. Uh, cut plugs without a flasher. I don't know. You guys run them with flashers at all? Or do you always run them without? Dodgers. You run them with Dodgers. Trolling with them with Dodgers. Yeah. Sweet. See, that's how much I know about cup plugging. I don't do it. Um, and that it really is an art. And, and hats off to you guys because that's that's I'm not good at. It. Um, so uh, I use the Reese Davis teasers. Oki also has teaser heads. They're super easy. So if you're just getting into this and bait is somewhat intimidating, use teaser heads. They're they're simple. They have a pin and two hook setup, and you hook just behind, uh, imagine like where an adipose fin would be, and inside this teaser head, can't see it, there's, a, there's gonna be a uh, toothpick on this back side that you can use to set tension. If you don't use a toothpick, you can't set tension on your bait, and it's not gonna, it just won't work. Your bait might have a super tight little roll, which isn't gonna work. Um, so that leading hook, I tried to get a good picture. I don't have any good pictures of it set up, but it's just a slight bend. It's it's very little. It's one you know one to two rolls a second. It's not very fast. It's a nice good roll of a wounded bait, um, and these are really easy to set them up with. Uh, after you brine, you're going to want to brine your bait with salt because when you get that rear hook in, or any of the liquid brines or whatever, you've got to firm up your bait, um, and you get that hook kind of back where it's nice and thin and set tension. If you don't have, if they aren't salted long enough or brine long enough, they'll tear bait and it won't it won't work out very well for you. So just make sure your bait's brined up real good. Um, it works awesome. Here is the tail section of Wayne's fish with that white flasher. I threw that in the tension right there. Um, these this is a Kamado fish. Um, actually all of these are Kamado fish. All these are Kamado. Um, has worked really well for bait. There's a few of us that just run bait all the time. So leader lengths for bait. And typically, I would have said 60 to 72 inches forever. That was it. Um, and there's a guy named, um, I think his name's Peter, and he owns uh, Coastal Blue Adventures in Canada. And uh, it's a charter service up there. And I saw a video of him like showing this kind of bait roll. And then I looked at his leader, and it was super, super short, like Dodger short. I couldn't figure out what was going on, so I messaged him and asked him, and he's like, cut your leader at 30, 30 inches, run your leader from the, the head of your teaser head to your swivel at 30 inches. So I did it, I was fishing with a guy, and weren't catching much fish, and then all of a sudden we did it, and it was lights out. 
and under the water when you see it, it's pretty cool. So they're rolling, right? You get your normal roll, and then you'll get this really hard whip, and it, and it, whatever it did that day, it was amazing. And I've actually cut all my leaders down pretty short, anywhere from the 32 to 60 range now is kind of where I hang out at. Um, and some days you're going to want to run them without a flasher, and then other days you're going to be running with a guy who doesn't want to run a flasher, but he's making sure you run a flasher for him. <laughs> he may be sitting in the back. Um, yeah, so I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna get a ballpark to start out with bait, start at 60 inches right away. Um, a lot of if you're fishing um, like Canada, it's a lot of the guys run seven feet, eight feet. Um, my buddy Mark runs his at seven, eight feet all the time. That's really not a bad number to start, and it's just gonna get a roll that flasher. It's not gonna affect any bit of the presentation of your bait, other than just its natural roll. Um, but don't be afraid to do something out of the ordinary and cut a 30 inch bait leader and run it behind a flasher, which is pretty, not a lot of, it's not really well heard of. Um, I run floor apartment, it's stiffer, I like that whip. Um, you know, Chinook teeth are pretty sharp. These pictures won't show it on this screen, but these teaser heads are um, all pretty beat up. Just from, you know, just from a couple fish. These chrome ones, you'll really see a lot of teeth marks in them. And so I, I try to run a, a thicker, you know, harder leader. Um, almost always uh, going to be 30 pound. Yeah, yeah. So 30 pound leaders, 40 pound leaders. There's a ton of videos online. Um, Canada, they can use treble hooks. They can use a single treble and then a trailing single um, point. So uh, Watermark Charter from Gibbs has a really good video. I think it's like six minutes fishing with rod is kind of Canada's like video guy. And he goes around and films his charters and what they do, and then goes, goes with them. And he has a really good video on how to rig these up. Um, and if anyone wants to message me or email me, I have some cards in the back. You can email me and I can help you set them out and figure, you know, get them all rigged up for you. So let's go over real quick on which ones that I typically like to run. These glow splatters are awesome. Uh, the chartreuse one did really well a couple of years ago in Area 10. Uh, chrome and the and the clear, I, the, I call this purple haze, it's not the purple haze, but it's just got a purple stripe and it's UV. These are great right off the bat. Chrome's awesome because those fish are chrome. Um, and, and most of the time that's, that's typically what I'm going to run and what I've got tied up. I've really gotten fond of the UV um, herring ape, it's been a great teaser head. Um, the glow has been a good one. And then this chrome blue scale green. And, it, and the reason that I kind of wanted to point this one out is for, you know, our waters change color quite a bit. Um, and that one has been a kind of a good like hat trick. If you throw it, like I, I don't typically like always run it, but if I'm having a hard time, I'll throw it on and sometimes it'll get good strikes. So and it's kind of wanted to hit on that. Some of these, you know, are with a lot of different colors. Um, but every now and then it just takes something a little bit different. Uh, they have large teasers. These are actually for strips, um, herring strips. If anyone, I've talked to a few guys that'll run strips. They have a, they have a, uh, also another large teaser that is for running big herring. Um, these are typically for anchovy, but smaller herring, five and a half, six inch herring will fit in these. But like I said, the, the head on the herring is quite a bit different, um, but they do fit in there and that's, I, I run herring out of those if I can't find the insurance. So um, the mother of pearl is always a good kind of half trick one as well. So hoochies, is that, how many hoochie guys are in here? Okay, sweet, cool. I didn't start running hoochies till last year, believe it or not. And they're pretty rad. They work really well. Um, all these pictures are ace high fly. Um, summertime, that's pretty much the only thing to run. Uh, here's a bunch of sand lights. So this is out. Um, uh, I think this is at Shark Reef in Area 7. This may be a hind bank, but this was, so this is what happened. We got back, sliced this fish open, and that was what was inside. And so luckily we just happened to choose a really light profile ace high fly. The candlefish or needlefish hoochies would have been awesome that day. Um, both of these were the lower, smaller 
um, profile. And it all depends on where what's run in Area 10. We do really well on large hoochies in this, because there's a lot of big bait running around, or big er bait, I guess, um, you know, five, six inch bait. So UV or glow, I don't really know. I don't really, I mean, it's it hasn't seemed to matter. I know in the summertime we fish glow a lot, and it's worked really well. The Army truck, um, the splatterback green with the orange stripe, everyone was seeing for a while on Facebook, was working awesome. Um, which is pretty strange to me, I don't quite get it. So you're, I mean, they're, you're kind of representing a squid or whatever here, and maybe a candlefish, but you kind of never really know why they hit stuff sometimes. So leader length's pretty short, uh, 20 to 36 inch. I fish them at 28, typically. That's full length, from the eye of my swivel all the way to my trailing hook. I pretty much always tie at 28 or close to. Um, 30 pound plus, any larger leader, 40 pounds is always what I tie with. But if you don't have uh, 40 pounds, 30 pounds is fine. But you're looking for a good whip action. Hoochies by themselves don't do anything. You just, you just drag them through the water, they don't do anything. So having a good flasher and short leader's length. I see it with the kokanee guys, right? So kokanee guys are getting super short leaders and a lot of whip. And it's the same thing with hoochies. Um, you want a lot of action with them. Um, people run dodgers with them too um, that I've seen. And they'll, they'll kind of still fish with them in a way. Um, they'll just sit in a current, you know, and it's just kind of sitting behind the boat doing its thing. And they're just keeping the boat not even moving forward. It's just kind of sitting in a, in a tide current or whatever. Um, or this fish right here, this is a summer fish. That's a Chinook that I caught um, on a double pink hoochie where I was fishing for pinks and a pink dodger. They will hit whatever they want to eat at any time. 